If this series was laid out in quarters, we're heading to the fourth. Let's go! When we make it to the end of this video, you'll have officially designed and animated a five second motion graphic piece. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks for pushing through and making it this far. We've made a ton of progress, but don't give up on me now. We need to take this momentum and finish strong. Our focus here will be the transition between Artboards 3 and 4 and the stats graphic on Artboard 4. To start though, we actually are gonna use the player anticipation movement to carry us through and use that as our transition into Artboard 4. So that also means when we open up Artboard 4, we actually don't want any layers visible initially. I just want it to overlay Artboard 3 and come in. So if I double click on Artboard 4, Let's turn off a lot of this because I'm just gonna worry about my background first. So I have a little trick. Let me hit Command colon to get rid of my ruler here. Or I could take this and just drag it up here. If I hit S, I can unlink my scale of my background. And if I hit Y, I can click on my anchor point and I can move it wherever I want. Now if I hit Command or Control, I can snap it to any point, even the center. And what I wanna do is snap it to the top. And since I have my scale unlinked, this is going to allow me to control how this shoots out. So this is at 100. Let's go ahead and set a scale keyframe. And let's push it out 10, 11, 12, and we can adjust that if necessary. And the very beginning, I want this to be zero. So if I turn this off, let's go back here so you can see what this is gonna be doing. I'm probably gonna move this up a little bit more. If I hit V, this is gonna be covering her up and reinforcing the movement. Let's double click back into Artboard 4 and I gotta add some easing here. So F9 into the graph. Again, green is Y. So I'm gonna do my one, two, three. And these are on top of each other. So I just had to move the red one and follow the same curved path here. starts out a little bit slow, so you can start to see something's coming and then it shoots out and then settles in down here. All right. And I also need to reveal the stats background. So if I hit S, we're gonna do something very, very similar. I just need to know that I'm going to 124. And so if I hit Y to move my anchor point, I'm gonna move my anchor point down here to the bottom and hold command or control and make sure I have that little bounding box around it and let go. And when I scale, I'm gonna leave these linked. My scale, make sure we're the same here. Click at the end, go back to the beginning and I want this to start at zero. This is gonna open up. So if I highlight these, go in here and do the same curve. I need to make sure, details, details. Okay, I don't want this to start at the same time though. So I'm gonna push this one, two, three frames into the distance. I also don't want to see this blue stats box before the pink background is over it. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to my effects and presets and there is a, an effect called set map. If I double click, I just need to change my take map from layer to my background. And you're gonna see it cuts that. So it's basically saying kind of the same thing that we've been doing with the, with the alpha mats, saying I only want my blue phone, phone screen, blue phone screen to appear when the background is behind it. So it's starting, but you don't see it until then. And let me show you what this looks like here on this main comp. 
So she comes up. That's kind of how she morphs into. I might move this up a couple frames. We can play with this timing in a little bit. So that's pretty close. All right, let's go back into Artboard 4. We have our cutout, and I want the photo to mimic the photo that's moving in the cutout here. So as this moves up, I also want her to be moving up in the frame as the background reveals this artboard. So let's, let's hit P, right click, separate dimensions. I only care about the Y and set this position at, and then hit Alt or Option and Shift, right arrow key. Let's push it out 12 frames and go right, go down. And that's probably about right. Hit F9. And if you get tired of doing the same same thing, I want to introduce you to a script called Ease Copy. And what it's going to do is allow us to copy the interpolation of a graph from a different layer. If I hit Copy, and let me go into my graph editor so you can see this. Paste. You can see it move. It it pastes the interpolation of the keyframes, of the graph between the two keyframes. And now, we'll see what that looks like. And I only want her to appear where this background is. So let's go ahead and duplicate the background and make her an alpha. Done deal. And the other thing with this photo is you always want something to be moving in the frame. So I'm going to hit P, pull up both of them, and I might offset this by one frame because, yeah, you don't see her in the first one anyway. And I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch here, and I'm just going to add your favorite expression. Let's just do 125. And I'm just saying this is how often, how much. So one would be once per second. So my 0.5 is really saying every two seconds, wiggle up to 125 pixels. So copy, alt click on the X position, and I'm gonna cut this a little bit and just say maybe 0.25, go every 75. Just, this is just gonna have her wiggle in the background just a touch. Just so that there's something moving. And we might need to cut that back, but that's good enough for now. She's moving in the frame. So the other thing is our stats. So let's turn all these back on. And what I'm realizing is the distance between the top and the top of my text and then the bottom of the, my text and the bottom of the stats graphic is, is pretty large in comparison to the side here. So I want to take the three text pieces on the side here. I'm going to push them to the middle. I'm going to hold shift and right arrow key. And maybe do two or three. Let's do three and see how that looks. And then highlight these and hold shift and pull them back to the left. One, two, three. Let's see how that looks. Looks a little tight. Let's go back out one. Hold shift and right arrow and hold shift and left arrow. It definitely feels better proportionately and still legible. That's the most important part. Yeah, spacing still looks good here. So I'm going to go ahead and pre comp my text by using command or control, shift and C. Call it stats, text. And I'm going to get an expression error, and the expression error is related to my color. If I EE -E to pull up all of my expressions with all the layers selected, 
I can hold Alt and click and drag to get rid of all of those. And then if I hit Tab to go back out to my Artboard 4 in my controller, I can reset that. So let's go ahead and click on the stats text, right click up in here in the effects controls, generate, fill, and then I can click down here and hit E to reveal that. Pull up my controller to get my colors back. And I wanna pick with this up to the primary color and all my stats colors are back. All right, so let's get back into my stats text. I don't care about the color in here because remember we're controlling it on the other side. But what I want to happen is for, if I go in here to my points and hit P, uh, let's go ahead and select all these and hit P. I need to separate dimensions. Again, I'm gonna follow the same path and line that I've been using before by playing with my Y position. So let's go ahead and go to my 10 frames, set a keyframe for my final resting position. Go back to the beginning of my comp, and I'm just gonna take this off screen. And let's go ahead and just make this 12. Alter option, right arrow, twice. And let's F9, get in here, click off, make sure we just have Y position selected. And you guessed it, three over. And it's just gonna resolve into place. Now, to help speed this up a little bit, I want my number to match my points. So what I'm gonna do is just pick with it. And it's, they're both gonna follow the same. And in order to speed up the rest of this, I'm gonna highlight my Y position, go back to the beginning here so I get this first keyframe. Command or Control C, go down to the Y position for Assist. And I wanna remember 597, so I'm gonna paste this in and it's gonna look like it's over the top. And if I go to my last keyframe here, cause this is my final resting position, I need to make sure that both of my keyframes are highlighted and then I can click and drag and take this down to 597. And this one will follow, maintain that same distance. Great, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did before, the number is gonna follow. And then I'm just gonna offset these by, you guessed it, one, two, three. All right, so we can copy keyframes again. And let's remember eight, seven, uh, let's round to eight, 18. Go down here, go back to the beginning and paste. Let's go to the last keyframe and I'm taking this, make sure they're both highlighted and take this up to eight, 18. Who was there? There we go and I did the wrong one. So I can just copy this, paste it here, take it back to the beginning and click off because I'm just gonna pick whip this one to that one. And we're gonna push this off, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what we did. Cool, it's a little cascading effect, kind of repeating the same repetition that we did for the transitional element. So not everything comes on at the same time, creates some visual interest and helps draw people's eye. So you, you're you telling people to start at the top, look up here first, and then as things come in, they can work their way down. So go back to Artboard 4. So now that we have this text, you can see it's we're having this, some of the same issues. We only want it to appear within the stat box. So we can duplicate the blue phone screen, stat box and make it an alpha. And we don't want points to already be up here, so we gotta offset it. We can play with that and figure out what we like. I think that works. Maybe push it down one or two more frames. Just trying to get some overlapping animation in here so that it feels a little bit better and helps draw people's eye as they're watching. All right, let's go back and see where we are here in relation to Artboard 3. Maybe make this a little bit tighter. There we go. 
and we can pull this out. Let's just make it six seconds, and we gotta loop it back to Artboard One. Let's go ahead and just play it, enjoy it, and see where we are. <laughs> 